and we are back. We are live. Welcome back to another wonderful session of Players of the Realms, Dawn of the New Era, with our wonderful party, the Dapper Dans. Or, as somebody had said in the last session, Dapper Dexter. Could be. From the last events, it was definitely, we're going to say, interesting. So instead of doing a question of the session for this one, what we're actually going to do is I'm going to ask the players who are present to just give a quick recap from their own perspective. So, Saris, we're going to start with you this time. If Saris had to give a summary of the last session, what would it be? We got the job done. And we're just okay. working on the cleanup. Okay. I like it. Short, sweet, concise. I aim to please. Moving forward. Let's, uh, how about you, Levin? How would you summarize the last session? An attempted infiltration. Failure upset attempt. Assault, battery, uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable dialogue, and a bit of curiosity as to why there are now pieces of people on the floor. Yep, that's definitely a question. Levin's going to need an answer for. The cover-up is in progress. I am surprised one of those questions wasn't why Fennec was holding a heart in his head. But, that could be for in-game, because that was at the point where Levin would have walked in. And Gearfried, how about yourself? Oh, golly. Well, uh, Gearfried um, joined in a little bit late into that combat after he locked a door and threw a create fire at somebody. Uh, the fight was over relatively quickly, and then Gearfried was helping indulge a young, budding mind in the uh, sciences. I like that positive spin. That is, uh... You have to encourage that sort of thing, and I've kind of gathered at this point that despite being a young man in a suit, uh, Fennec is basically a child. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't say a child, but he has childlike wonder. I like the verbiage. <laughs> Unfortunately, we won't be able to have Fennec to rebut or contest any of uh, the mentions of his childish personality, because unfortunately Boston could not make it tonight, but he will be with us again next week. Until then, Let's do a quick recap from the perspective of the DM. After the glowing carpet and after the glowing sigils summoned these four individuals, one of them was Master Thief, one was a cult fanatic, and the other two were just regular cultists. They entered and immediately the Master Thief went straight to the locker. Thinking quickly, Cerus locked the door, shut it trapping that Master Thief inside with herself and Cogfried and Fennec. Ultimately, they were able to defeat the Master Thief with Fennec launching a massive strike. I believe he had used um, Aganzari's Scorcher. No, oh. it was a, uh, Scorching Ray. Scorching Ray, sorry, yep. He did a nice chunk of damage and ultimately, as described, melted the face as Sarah's requested. Uh, Maylee was also in that room and she had gotten one of her first rounds of combat with the party. Mm. So, yep, that was after uh, Fennec goading her on, mentioning how she was being useless in the face of combat. Vet, uh, Levin, on the other hand, had engaged the three cultists. Uh, starting with the three cultists, 
he had dashed through the he had created a fog cloud dashed through it to avoid confrontation before he eventually got cornered and ended up leaving a trail of bodies within his wake one of those cultists began to make their way back towards the library or towards the uh, dining room where the library was. This individual was pursued by Gierfried at first, who, as mentioned, hurled fire at that individual, followed after by Levin once he was finished dispatching the two that had continuously attacked him. After that, they left four dead bodies. Levin drags the other body back and then goes off to talk with the head butler who was ultimately summoned by Gierfried, who had mentioned to him that he has to help that this head butler has to help them hide the bodies or dispose of the bodies. Not liking this too much, the head butler decides to make his way back and that's where Gierfried then up uh, that's where Levin then confronts him, not confronts, but talks to him, and he summons his staff, and Levin begins to make his inquiries about this being an inside job. <sighs> Some of the information that he had found out was that there are really only five members of the staff. That does include the head butler. There is a sixth member, but he is not currently in the house, because he is the steward and guard to Horrid and Diori. Ah, whew, a lot of events happened, so I just had to take a quick breath. Mm. As, oh, Levin, a DM inspiration. as Levin got back, he was left to the stunning surprise of the amount of blood and body parts that were neatly stacked like piles of wood while Fennec and Gierfried explore the anatomy of the humanoid heart. Gierfried, using his wonderful artificer inventions, charged up his gauntlets and was electrifying the heart to replicate the stimuli that a heart needs to be. This did cause little bits of blood to begin pooling, and Fennec commented on how that heart, even while being dead, is more efficient, of his, efficient than his own. <sighs> And then that's pretty much the scene that Levin walked in on that we left off. All right. Did I miss anything important on that one? No. Fine. And it was pretty unbiased, so. Yum. If you say so. I mm -hmm. think so. I didn't even mention about all the rules and laws you broke. Not yet. <laughs> we didn't get to that part yet. Yeah, we didn't get there yet. Right now, we're still in the instant. We're in a private dwelling. That's a civil suit. <laughs> oh. Players of the realms. Dawn of the Phoenix Ray. <sighs> Yami, you are... <laughs> Holy. No. Sorry about that. No, you're good. I mean, you are currently in the ballroom. Uh, your character would have been either stewing at some of the events that had happened. After all, your son did enter the office that was pretty well identified as being off limits. You had Saris who wandered off on her own, leaving the house again something that is out of your control and overall you might just be a little bit bored because you've been watching a necklace almost 24 hours a day for the last 48 hours <clears throat> yeah fair enough but I would definitely be suing over the incidents with Fennec like, uh, like how do I get through to this guy like because I haven't been there, so I can't, you know, I don't have that kind of full authority. But I'm, I would be, yeah, I would have just been stewing about Fennec. Like, hmm, like, what can I do to maybe 
be more of an influence, especially more than Cyrus. Cause Good I point. mean, I I respect her, but she's not the best of uh, influences, in my opinion, at least. <laughs> so yeah, I would have just been doing like pacing back and forth, like lost in thought. After being lost in thought, mm-hmm. sometime an hour, hour and a half would have passed by where you would have left the ballroom and before you go in, before we introduce you back into the scene, we're going to go to Levin. Levin, where we left off, you had just walked into the scene and you had seen Fennec pressing the heart up to his face. And you would have seen a smear of blood across his face. You had kind of mentioned something about what's going on. And then you guys began to discuss that someone should go in and start playing the equivalent of bad cop. We're going to take it from about that point. Could someone explain to me why they've been separated into pieces? Easier disposal. I thought that would be obvious. And how do you propose we dispose of them? Uh, we will need a tub of quicklime. Right. So rather than call in authorities and explain that we were acting in defense of domicile and possessions on behalf of the homeowner, we've... I- I only am concerned that to do that would be to violate our remit to be unnoticed. Of which I've been yelled at already once before. One of the staff members could have fetched authorities. They could have brought them here. Look at those people, Levin. They're milk toast. No one's going to believe they fought off these people. You do realize that once law enforcement shows up here, regardless, that we are now going to have to additionally explain this. I don't know what this is. Uh, Levin is gesturing towards the literal body parts. Yeah, no, she knows. She just she, she's just looking at him with like a deadpan expression. This will go away. That's the whole point. It's, look, it's already rendering itself down to much smaller, manageable bits. Are we just going to gloss over the fact that she knows how to get rid of a body without any evidence? Because quite frankly, that's what I'm more concerned with. Honestly, it would, be, it, it would have been faster if there were pig farmers around, but... That's not an option. Area. I was led to believe that wasn't an option. Yeah, we aren't supposed to be leaving, are we? For the purposes of maintaining our ability to provide security for the item in question, we would not to let our presence be known outside of the dwelling. I am cutting off an avenue of awkward questioning. You can thank me later. Speaking of questioning, you uh, were saying someone needs to play bad cop, right? Accusatorial questioning is what I specifically said. I can take you up on that. I guess you can just say cop. (laughs) Uh, What are you trying to get them on? I mean, I no questions I have. I'd like to ask. Trying to get them on anything, but you have your own series of questions to ask pertaining to specific the photographs that you seem to be interested in. Uh, any recent okay. going on that might have happened here? Shipments in and out? Odd behaviors? Differences of opinion? Gossip? Literally anything at this point. Right, I'm gonna need that suitcase with all the uh, dirty pictures in it. It's relevant to the question, I, I promise. And I, uh, of course. Grab my suitcase. Alright, I will be, uh,. Actually, it might be uh, might be worth it to have someone uh, come in to pull me out if I get a little bit too, you know, aggressive with them and 
just like pop in, make it seem like he's trying to also be. Where's Yami? Yami can do this. Yami. I was gonna actually just chime in there for a second. Yami, it is at this point that you do enter the scene. Yami. Yami, you're muted. Yep. Sorry about that. No worries. So you are now entering the scene. You see the massive pool of blood. You see the stacked body parts. You see Fennec, not only his suit covered in blood, but also blood smeared across his face, as well as Gearfried. I believe you haven't yet at this point done prestidigitation, unless you want to uh, just continue that from the last session. Uh, yeah, Gearfried will uh, prestidigitate the... Uh... The blood away, like as he is, Yami's walking, and it's just like kind of a it's a cantrip, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Would so, you still have the heart in your hand? Fennec no, no, is holding no, the heart. Fennec could. Oh, god. So, uh, yes, Fennec would have the probably still be holding the, onto the heart. Um, and we're going to assume so because again, Matt, oh, not the great knight, so the heart. and it sounds like something he would do. And is Sarah stacking bodies at this point as well? At this point, I'm or... just finishing up. I uh, probably got the heads off to one side, just making sure they don't roll away. You know, she's neat, and she organized the body parts by size and by area. You know, by size and type. There, heads over there, legs over there. Now, did you put the arms and the legs together, or are they in separate? I did because they stack like cordwood better. I did like a Japanese bonfire tower with them. Gotcha. Uh, okay, that's you know it's funny. That's exactly what I was kind of thinking. In like the squares stacked up with the white. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. Yeah, walking in, I'm like, yeah. So Fennec, we need to, and I'm just gonna like look at everybody one by one. Hey, Yami. Look at the bodies. See Fennec with a heart, and I'm immediately looking at Levin, like. Are you, you're in the room, right? I'm present. Yeah, I'm immediately looking at Levin. Only because I know you're the most responsible one out of us, and the fact that this is happening, <clears throat> I'm, I'm just like, huh? Like, when what? I left these bodies, they were intact. My goal is by the time you come back the next time, they should be gone. Who are these bodies? Like, what? Why? I'm so confused. Uh, Levin's gonna gesture towards the sigils on the floor of the room. Right. You need to be brought up to speed. Um, teleportation magics were used. People trespassed. We were made to prevent the taking of the item in question. And we yeah. feared for our lives. That bit's I stood my ground. We all feared for our lives. I okay. have no idea what went on in the room with the other thief. But he I had to dispatch. Stabby. I had to dispatch these two, and he points towards generally two of the parts of the body of the people that he knew that he took out. And I would helpfully point to two heads. And the third one there was being in a combat with Gearfried. Combat's a generous word. I threw fire at him. Right, and All right. in an emergent situation in defense of your body, I fired I think what we're all getting at here is that all of this was completely rational. And justified. Exactly. Hold on one second. Let me just process this for a minute. Um, Alright. Good to know that they were adversaries, so I'm pretty sure that these are the thieves that we were here to guard from. At least one set. Yeah, the first wave of them. <laughs> Alright. That's, no that's very... Explanatory. Now, my question is, why am I looking at three heads and a heart? Five. There's five heads. Oh. 
Uh, there should, there should be foreheads. There's foreheads, yeah. Foreheads. Oh. Head, there's heads. Why is there heads? I was just heads? like, Where, where's this extra head coming from? Huh. <laughs> I have a question. If I... If these three are accounted for for being dispatched by me and Gilfried, and that lift, and he looks towards Theris, towards Fennec, towards... Maylee. And Maylee, and she's in the same room. Maylee is in the room with you. She has a horrified look on her face still. Um, right. She was not approving of the dismemberment of bodies. All of you had to manage one individual, and I assume that uh, you're free. Uh, you gave Cogfrey in order to secure the item as well, so I'm assuming that he was also in the room? Yeah, but... I actually used him to cast Arcane Lock on the door to keep the uh, gun inside. I did not know that, although you did apprise me of the capability. But that said, it took three and one extra of you to take on one thief, and none of you thought to disable him? He what? had what? two... He had two daggers, and he was really fast with them. He was going to mana fennec. But... Huh. You couldn't, you couldn't, like, uh, you know... None of out. you had the capacity to render him unconscious or restrain in any fashion. I gestured at my daggers. These are only sharp pointy things that cut. I'm gonna look and at the combat And Levin is gonna part. take the butt of his crossbow and hit it against the other part of his palm. It's like, and that's not something you can do with the handle? Why would you do that? You can't kill them if you do that. That that's that's my point. You can't interrogate a corpse easily. To ask questions, the dead. As I'm looking at and the body part, what happens? I'm like, and that what happens wasn't... when the person that sent these people decides to ask after that? Okay, look, look. I've never been in a position where I want to ask questions of the person trying to stab me. I work on reflex. Right, you're not used to being in a box. Well, I mean, I can fight in a box, but I usually stab a lot and then walk away. Which, you know what, I'm not going to address that line of thought. Better that you don't. I'm Do you going to, to look that around. Way? I'm going to look around to see if there are any materials that we can use to relocate these. If you can find me some quicklime and a tub, I can't stress that enough. Do you know how much quicklime we're going to need to dispose of this? Perhaps the steward could get us some. And if that's procured all at once, do you realize how suspicious that looks? House Dorian shouldn't look suspicious at all. They do whatever the if fuck I they may, want. If I may, why... Why is the need to hide the bodies? That was my initial question, and that has yet to be answered outside of don't, Terrace being cheeky. Don't you think showing him the faces of his uh, foes, as I uh, I, I mean, get it, look, it's maybe in a he might recognize them and can, you know, call you know out what? the doer if you, or. If you want, we can hold on to the heads in a closet or something to view later, but I feel like the less it looks like there was a battle here, the better it looks for everything all around. And again, my initial question is like, I, I assume preferring to Levin knocking them unconscious, the fact that they're carving them up, I'm pretty sure that was the least of their intention. But again, you answered the question of my, of my other question about hiding the body, so I mean, as long as we, he knows what happened is what matters. He doesn't need to know. All he needs to do, all he needs to do, is see that his precious little widget is in its case when he gets here. Well. Also, he needs to know that his wife is sleeping with everything. You can thank him. Exactly. Later. If I may, I was gonna say maybe he should know that this happened and we were here to protect it after being, you know, all of our everybody's uh. Indiscretions as I look towards Fennec and Ceres. 
maybe this will be, you know, proof of our efforts to make amends or something of the sort. I mean, if he wants to apologize, he can. And you mean like he has in Fennec or he has in, um... Diorian. Huh. I'm gonna rub my eyebrows, like... Well, all that aside, uh, I need to ask the waiter, or the, uh, not the waiters, the staff a couple of questions. I was wondering if you wanted to be the one to pull me out after I get, you know, a little heated in there to sort of make them sweat a little bit, get them a little nervous. Give me some quick line. Okay. <laughs> Sirs, now I know you have not needed to dispose of any type of bodies or have had to deal with attempts at body disposal before. Quicklime does actually speed up decomposition. Makes great if you say so. Mm. Sulfur comes up the smell, though. It, it, that's exactly its purpose. It's meant to keep the smell away. As this is going on, you are going to notice that several of the staff can be seen crossing, looking at you guys with weary expressions. All right, I need to talk to all of you. Stop gawking, I, 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 need, to, I need to have a word. You're going to notice that uh, as, as you address them, they sprint off. What? Well, get, get fucking back here! And I'm going to run after them. Concrete, come! Concrete will <laughs> soar flying through. So now you are flaming, intimidating, with a metallic dragon flying uh, right behind I'm, you. I'm not doing it in like I'm going to murder you. I'm doing it as like a parent would to a child. Oh, yes, but they also just saw you cleaning up a pool of blood. So, with stacked po body po parts, you know, you, without even intending to. You, w you can agree, you may be coming across a little intimidating, at least. Assuming he was... I mean... He said he needed somebody's help. I would have followed him. Like, I'll be right back, guys. Just a smidge. Mayhaps. <laughs> All's I'm saying. I'm not having you roll an intimidation check. It's yeah. just... it. It's the moment. It's the situation. I hear you. Oi, I, I need to talk to you all about... Fuck, j get back here! You would know, uh, Gearfried, you would know, though, that the head butler is currently in one of the rooms that um, Levin would have pointed out to you. Ah, for fuck's sake. All right, I guess I'll start with him. I'm so gonna... he would have been in this room here, which is where... Um, um... Where is it? This room here. Okay. <clears throat> I gotta move. Move my tokens. Cool. Already. I approach. Alrighty. As you enter the room, what is your. Give me a perception check. Ooh, okay. First roll of the day. That would be it, right? Uh, okay. Perception. Ooh, my perception is not great. Believe in you. Ooh. I use an inspiration. I'm Do we sure have any? You only have two left. Yeah, I'll use it. Also, it's not a high DC. I'm going to say don't waste the inspiration on this one. Um, okay. What you are going to notice, though, is that as you enter the room, he is shutting the door to a cabinet. What are you he doing there? Then, he then walks back, um, ignoring your question, pouring himself another glass of uh, whiskey. Sensible. Might want to take it easy. Maybe Why, are you going to murder me too? Oh, I hadn't planned on it. Are you looking to steal that necklace over there? Why would I steal the necklace? And he's going to give you like an incredulous expression like he's almost offended. Why would I murder you? Well, you've already killed, what, four people in there? 
correction, my compatriots killed four people in there. I dissected one of them, but I was in the pursuit of science. Oh, that makes me feel loads better. I'm sorry. Well, it certainly should. Science is gonna advance our... I mean, it, look at all the medical marvels we received from science. I was helping to educate a young mind. Anyway, he, that is he's all going to, here or there. He's going to knock back about a two-finger shot. That is neither here nor there. Look, I have to ask a couple of questions, and I need answers from you, and I need them to be honest answers. Can you do that for me? When have I not been honest with you people? I don't know, quite frankly, we thought everyone was being honest with us at first, and then these idiots teleported through the gaudy rug where there were sigils of a teleportation spell placed beforehand. Which means that someone who works here or comes here regularly had the time and the skill to do that. I need to find out from you who did that. Oh yes, like we have the say to cover an area with a carpet. Think about it, fool. How would we have done it? Obviously, look, we know that, or at least we're all on the working assumption, maybe not you, so I'm, I, I'm cluing you in here. We're all working on the assumption that the lady of the house actually had some rather ill-intended motives to take her husband for a ride, and I pull out the suitcase because Lord knows she's been riding everything else. I just, like, flip it open and start showing him some of the photos. But here's the thing. I find it a little bit difficult to believe that in a house like this that is constantly staffed, that no one would notice that some of these events were happening in this very state. So I need to know from you, despite the fact that it might slander or otherwise offend your master, who the fuck knows that he was being cuckolded by his wife? Because they're the most likely to actually know, or to have actually created that portal circle. Working on orders, obviously, since she was the one that requested the rug be put there for that reason. But she had to have help, and someone had to have noticed. Well, as said, if I knew, I would have told the Lord of the House. Do you think I would actually allow my employer to be robbed? Do you think that I would have you people in this house if I could have been otherwise avoided? I think that it's rather convenient that you just happen to not notice any of that, which either means you're incompetent or you're corrupt. So why don't you tell me which it is? Good day, sir. And he's going to pour himself another shot. Right. Well, just as a bit of a heads up, should the Lord of the House hear about any unsavory things or a mess that might be cleaned up in the near future, I'll be sure to inform him that the head of his house doesn't know his head from his ass. And I'm mm. going to depart. Go ahead and give me another perception check. Uh, perception. Ah, better than the last time. You're going to hear a slight mumble. You hear it all. All right, and thank you for just leaves concrete on his shoulder. Shuts the door behind him. Thinks to himself, might need to put Saris on the butler. <laughs> all right, where's someone else I can talk to? With that, we're gonna, else doing I'm doing. we're gonna jump over to the other group. So those of you who are still at the bodies, what are you doing during this time? I'm literally next to Fennec and exp explaining what quicklime does to a body. You see, when a body is buried in quicklime, uh, it's typically slaked with water, and that would occur typically by absorbing the water out of the body itself or from the surrounding soil, which would then be partial desiccation but drying out of the tissues. And that causes a small degree of superficial burning, and the reaction itself generates heat and partially mummifies tissue. And the reason I know this, and he cuts a look towards Ceres, is because I've had to investigate murders before.
just and stares. He, he's just going to kind of like nod his head um, and listen in an interested way, but oh. is grasping maybe about 60% of it. <laughs> Short version. Quick lime is good for preparing the bottle for t- proper and clean disposal, but it is not a fast method of removing evidence of a body. In fact, it causes decomposition to take longer. If you want to quickly dispose of a body... Desiccated your... bodies burn faster. Provided the material can burn, yes. Which is bringing it to my point. Cremation, burial, or submersion. Exposure to water and oxygen allows for more rapid decomposition than simply covering them in quick lime. Burning being the fastest. But barring that, you could get a measure of sulfuric acid and simply just dunk the tissue. But it does take time. In the meantime... Cyrus will finish stacking the bodies neatly. Like the torsos on top of each other now. Like the four heads arrayed on the torsos next to the little bonfire stack of limbs. Oh, man. We're all going to be on somebody's watch list after this episode. Serial killer den. I'm definitely just leaning on the wall, arms crossed, one foot, and I'm, I have the most inquisitive look. Like, I'm just still processing what the heck is even going on. Like, just the fact that kind of Levin is so calm with this, not yelling at nobody, and everybody's just, like, doing all this stuff, I'm just I'm like, yeah, um, what? What? <laughs> Proper procedure for this would be to contact authorities and have them show up. Well, can we just do something Finally. about these bodies before they start to stink? We would have to relocate them to an isolated area outside of the demence. Dim- so. Hence the quick lime. Well, yes, but where does one, where do we get quick lime? That's why you asked the house steward that's supposed to be resourceful. Well, from what I found out, the house steward isn't here. Yeah. If we're reporting it to the authorities, don't we need evidence of the attack and the fact that as I look up, I look at the uh, stacked up torsos that this doesn't look that great? Runes on the floor. We have witnesses. Trusted staff members. Why do we need to tell authorities? All that does is bring cops. And what do you propose we do? First of the bodies, hide them. And what of the staff? They get on with their lives? They have done nothing wrong that we can prove, and they will not be doing anything wrong by informing the authorities of something that happened here. So I just, I'm just confused. Why would we tell anyone anything about this? This is a perfectly closed incident. All well, you're doing you is adding... Going to control the staff from telling the authorities anyway? The bodies will be gone. They can tell whatever they want. You would see a young female human making her way towards the front door. Hello there. If you move, you will not get very far. She is not acknowledging you, but she is hurrying her pace to the front door. I will bonus action death catch her. (laughs) She is going to sweep a kind of in a surprise fear as you quickly approach her. Hello. I think what? you misunderstood. Hi, I was a talking to you and you kept walking and that's rude. 
Okay. Now I know you're probably very uncomfortable and nervous around me. That is a reasonable response and probably a smart one. Where are you going? Out. Why and where? Because I can and none of your business. Do you really want to take that answer in tone with me? I look back at the bodies. <laughs> Give me an intimidation check. Do I have advantage because I dismembered bodies and I'm covered yes. in blood? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you could see that there is fear in her eyes, but bravado doesn't drop. Are you telling Thank me you. that I can't leave? I can't. Uh, if I, I may interject, my apologies. Um, obviously, there's been a violent incident in this home. Miss, what do you think happens when the person who sent these individuals comes asking questions? The staff that is known to be here. Okay. Do you think they're going to be polite? No, so I'm supposed to, what, just sit here and stay in fear? No, you're supposed to be exceptionally careful and quiet, but if you leave right now, who do you have that is going to assure your safety outside? Well, considering it seemed like your friend here was just threatening me, what do I have to protect me from in here? You do no, raise a fair point. You raise a fair point. She's being difficult. Can I go? But... No. I'm not detaining you, and she doesn't have the right to. Mm -hmm. This is a bad idea. She is going and to... If you were going to... And if you were going to do something about it, Ceres, you would have already done it. She is going to attempt to reach for the door. I've already turned and started walking away. It's a bad idea to leave, though. And she is going to leave without a second word. Moving over back to Gearford. Gearford, you are trying to chase down some of these staff members. You would have noticed that one of them would be heading towards the vestibule. Um, you would see... Uh, one maid still remaining. You would be able to find the chef in the kitchen. Vernon, who is the head butler, is who you had just left in that bar area. And then you would also find, um, be able to see a chamber, a chamberlain who is kind of keeping his distance from you. You would all notice visibly that the staff is keeping a far birth from you all. Alright, I will uh, point at the... I don't want to go to the... like. You, you said there was a chamber maid or... Chamberlain. 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 Uh, I'm going to point at him and I'm just going to say, you! Come here. I need to talk to you. Give me a persuasion check. He will kind of approach you, but he's going to stop about 15 feet away. It's all right. I can walk the other distance. Where is he in this on this map? So he would be up here. Okay. I have some questions I have to ask you. You're going to notice that as soon as he gets within, as soon as you get within five feet, he's going to take five foot. A, a step back. So he is going to maintain a five foot distance between you. 
Oh, I see. Uh, not very uh, fond of Genasi, are you? What's a Genasi? Oh, I don't care about that. Uh-huh, I'm sure. I've heard that quite a few times. It's very offensive, and quite frankly, I think less you as a person for doing it. Oh, no. But regardless. No, see, for me, it was watching you play around with the heart, and you act as if it was nothing. Sorry. Something about that seems to uh, churn my stuff. I'd rather a likely story. not give you the opportunity to take mine. For fuck's sake, they broke into the fucking house. Right, and they, and their kidding. bodies needed to be desecrated. I did not desecrate. Well, I took the heart out. Yeah, that was me. But I didn't cut them up into itty bitty bits. I was showing someone something for science. Regardless, anyway, you wanted need... something? Yes. I need to know. In the last couple of weeks, maybe months, what has the lady of the house been up to that you've personally witnessed, and who has been spending the most time around her that frequently is inside this house, other than uh, Mr. D uh, Mr. Horton? Diorian. Oh, Horton Diorian. He's going to look at you with a skeptical expression. With the 10 for persuasion you rolled, you aren't going to be able to coax answers out of but I will give you the opportunity to roll again. Oh. Come on. I'm going to use uh, my inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> Very That's wise the last move. last one. Oh, wait, no. No, you should have one more. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't use it the first time because you stopped. Right. Using it. That's, that's what I mean. You have one more left. All right. Yeah. So with the 16, you're going to look at him. Well, the only person who's really been around lately has been that, that bloke with the weird name, short. The halfling, uh, the party planner? Yes. And sometimes the lady has just sent a lot of us out for a couple of hours on end, whether they were to run errands and things like that, of, of that sort. All right, that much I could have figured. Not that it's not useful that you do know that, but is the lady of the house friendly with anyone specifically within that, other than her husband? Is there any staff member she confides in, or someone that she spends a lot of time around? To my knowledge, no. None of the staff are really fond of her. Yeah, I gathered that. And I can only imagine the hours that you will work. Well, it's also, she's not a very good person. Uh, yeah, she's not. She's trying to steal from her husband, who she's actively having an affair against. Um, well, that and she also treats us horribly. Uh, yes, but everyone treats waitstaff horribly. Not that they not, should, but... Not true. Lord Diorian is never like that. And he has chastised her multiple times upon hearing. This might be a rather important question, just so I don't get any wrong ideas. Uh, does Lord Diorian have any um, mistresses? It's a little forward, but be honest if you know the answer. Honestly, I would not know anything of that sort. That would be Henry would have those types of answers. All right. All right, well, I appreciate the honesty. That's been helpful. All right, is that it? Can I go now? Uh, yeah, you can, you can be off. Look, just spread send word around the wait staff. I'm just going to be asking questions like this to everybody. The fact of the matter is, someone from within the house, well, actually, no, that's probably that. Never mind. I'm going to go back to the group. Okay. And he's going to just go back to his job. I'm going to regroup with everybody. So with that, you guys are all back together. You have a clean-ish type room. I mean, after all, the pieces are still 
bleeding out to small degrees as the as yeah. parts drain. Like it, I will it, look at Gilfried and it's like, can you, you know, like the blood stains and whatnot, can you make that, like, can you magic that away? Gilfried will press to digitate the blood away, and at the same time, uh, as I do it, I look at Sarah and I go, why is it that every time I do this, you're covered in blood? Why is it every time it happens, I need to kill someone first? There are less violent... I'm, I'm not doing this right now. Um, I can't... So, out of the two people I talk to, I know it's not a great sample size, but they're being uh, rather evasive at the moment. Um, I feel fairly confident in my assertion that the uh, portal runes were likely placed there uh, by the lady of the house and her halfling lover. Um, it yes. seems that, well, yeah, it seems that sh they, on multiple occasions, sent the entirety of the staff out, so probably so that they could place this without much in the way of effort, or, uh, not effort, sorry, in the way of, uh, um, prying eyes. Interesting. Well, paging something like that would have been several incidents over several days and costing a not small sum of material. It's not like they can't afford it. She's rich. Yes, but they would have to maintain books somewhere. Well, not for going in the office again. We could raid their bedroom, but if it's as enchanted as that office is. Did we look over the files with the uh, mistress? Maybe there might be something in there. It was mostly photographs. Here, if you mm. can pull out the suitcase. Is it just photographs? Uh, you haven't had a real moment to thoroughly investigate it, but from what you did see, the large portion was photographs. Gearfried will investigate. I will help. As you I mean, it's kind of, be in here. As you kind of look in, uh, the only other option, the only other things that were in there were notes that the individual was taking. Go ahead and give me an investigation check. Okay. Would I would I be able to give him advantage to help to help him? Or unless you want me to do a separate roll, it's up to you. Give me a separate roll. Okay. Oh, I don't even need it. Nice. All right. I need it. Kind of <laughs> okay. Kind of okay. With that, with the 23, you would find these documents, and where the handwriting is a bit sloppy, you're still able to relatively read it with ease. And you find out that he has been keeping track of our ruse since he first met the lady the lady Bjorn. You also kind of find out that the person that this individual was hired by was from a member of the Biorian family that is located in Shot. So you would see the date, the seal for Alden Biorian. Is that a name you would recognize? You, you would not recognize it, but Yami would. Oh. It's the I guy from Sharn. Yep, I remember. I know exactly who it is. The guy, I was like, yeah, I don't want any gold. Yep. Uh, so I would only see a bit of that unless he points it out to me and says, hey, do you see this? I won't. I'll be like, hmm. Well, you would notice the seal specifically belonging to the Unicorn Estates, which is from Alden Dior. Uh, Alden Dior. Alden. Okay, so I'd be like, hmm. Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to scratch my beard and be like, hmm. Oh, yeah, it was that one guy. And I'm going to look towards, uh, we're all still in the same room, I'm assuming, right? <clears throat> yes, you are regrouped. So I'm going to bring it back to, like, 11. It starts like, oh, wasn't this the symbol of the guy that we worked for the first time we came here? 
I'm gonna mention the name. Yes. Hmm. Remember when I said that indiscretions of individual houses are usually dealt with? Actually, plenty of times, yeah. He gestures towards the photographs. This was most likely going to be sent to Horden as a reminder to keep his house in order. Mm. It's like their house is less in order than they thought if it's not in the right hands. It also means that they likely had a secondary response. Mm. And we're stuck here waiting for it. Can we at least keep the heads of these perpetrators secure so we can show it to them, so... Wait, does that mean that we're caught in the middle of some sort of House Jorian power play or internal fight? Most likely. I do believe believe I displayed my exasperation towards House politics. Mm Mm-hmm. Sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong, Uh, Levin, you're saying that the, um, uh, the fellow that you all apparently worked for in the past, um, he's... Is, uh, sorry. Keeping uh, tabs on another member of the house. Right. So that means that we're actively now dealing with two potential not threats, but... Well, I can't imagine that Aldrin Dor- Dorian would, pro- would be sending any more... Carrying the name Dorian means that they are dragon-marked heir. I'm aware, but I... What I'm saying though is it's common knowledge. They made it a point to spread the to spread the information that uh, Orden is out on vacation the next two weeks. So even if they were to send in a secondary, you know, response, it wouldn't make sense to do it now. And plus, that guy was going to go to the newspaper, wasn't he? He came here first, looking for an attempt at blackmail. Most likely, that wasn't specifically planned for. Yeah, that was too spontaneous. Poor Korea. As for these fellows, I've all got the stats again. What did you what did you do to the courier? Uh I framed him for betrayal uh as a traitor for the task. Was well, that all? I'm gonna like raise the eyebrow at service. It seemed like the best way to keep him busy. He might nobody be dead now. Nobody saw you. Nobody saw you. Okay. Specifically, we need to we need to relocate these pieces, and we need to keep those. Any gestures towards that? We need to keep those intact in case someone wants to use divinations. Just need the heads. You can get rid of the rest. Yeah. Uh. You need something with the capacity of speech. The heads are just simply convenient towards that. The heads will work, trust me. Yes, and if somebody breaks the jawbone in the meantime... You can mend it. I think I'm going to face palm this time. How is it that you guys would like to attempt to get rid of, get rid of and or hide these pieces? going to go approach one of the staff very slowly very openly with my hands at my sides in an unthreatening manner in fact I will leave my daggers behind so I will be also unarmed no you won't I will look unarmed (laughs) (laughs) you notice that they are very fearful towards you. Um, because yes, it's like... Many of them witnessed how yes, uh, skillful uh, at will... times you were with that blade. I, I have my hands up like like a surrender position. It's like, look, I, I'm looking for a little compromise here. I don't want to make you too nervous. So I'm going to keep as much distance as is comfortable for you to talk to you. But I do need to ask you a few simple questions and then I'll be out of your hair. Go ahead and give me a persuasion check. 
it is going to be a straight roll, even though I was tempted to put it at disadvantage because they are terrified of you. But it will be a straight roll. Is it because I'm trying to be? Is it, it's because you're, you're trying. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it. Cool. Uh, wait, not performance. Okay. What do you want? Like makes a face at the tone, but doesn't say anything. Uh. So. I need a place to dispose of some items that I have recently acquired. Where on the grounds would be the best place to keep them out of sight and perhaps be buried and forgotten? What is it you're trying to bury? A razor iris, what do you think? You're going to see them, their faces kind of immediately show shock before they start just quieting up. Sorry, we can't help you. And they're going to begin to walk away. I'm trying to be polite. Please don't walk away. Well, please don't ask us to help you bury bodies. I'm not asking you to bury them. I'm just asking where can I put them. Lord Diorian would not like this. This is not a cemetery. Where nearby could I dispose of them? You know this neighborhood better than I. Listen, when Haley gets back from talking to the police, they're going to have the question, so it's better off having them. She, Ferris looks at them. That was a mistake. You're going to hear it eep, as they quickly scurry away. Sleep with your doors locked. They're going to scurry know. faster. Not that the locks here would stop me. No, I'll turn around and walk back. With that, you are back with the party. And what I'm going to say is we are going to take a quick five, five to ten minute break. This way our players can refresh their beverages. This way that you all have a chance to check out our wonderful Patreon, check out our wonderful store, peruse through some of our shorts in the meantime to catch up on past events. We'll be right back. While our players take a brief break, check out playersofthe-realms.com, and if you need dice and other things like that, check out dicelegion.com, and use product code POTR to get 10% off of your purchase while simultaneously supporting us here at Players of the Realms. Also, be sure to check us out on YouTube and Spotify. If you would like to support us, check us out on Patreon as well. All the links are able to be found on playersofthe-realms.com. While you're there, check out our wonderful merchandise. We are in the process of adding more, so keep an eye out. Patreon subscribers receive a discount on all purchase, so while on the store it's more incentive to help support our wonderful cast.
While our players take a brief break, check out playersofthe-realms.com, and if you need dice and other things like that, check out dicelegion.com, and use product code POTR to get 10% off of your purchase while simultaneously supporting us here at Players of the Realms. Also, be sure to check us out on YouTube and Spotify. If you would like to support us, check us out on Patreon as well. All the links are able to be found on playersofthe-realms.com. While you're there, check out our wonderful merchandise. We are in the process of adding more, so keep an eye out. Patreon subscribers receive a discount on all purchase, so while on the store it's more incentive to help support our wonderful cast. While our players take a brief break, check out playersofthe-realms.com, and if you need dice and other things like that, check out dicelegion.com, and use product code POTR to get 10% off of your purchase while simultaneously supporting us here at Players of the Realms. Also, be sure to check us out on YouTube and Spotify. If you would like to support us, check us out on Patreon as well. All the links are able to be found on playersofthe-realms.com. While you're there, check out our wonderful merchandise. We are in the process of adding more so keep an eye out. Patreon subscribers receive a discount on all purchase, so while on the store it's more incentive to help support our wonderful cast. While our players take a brief break, check out playersofthe-realms.com, and if you need dice and other things like that, check out dicelegion.com, and use product code POTR to get 10% off of your purchase while simultaneously supporting us here at Players of the Realms.
Also, be sure to check us out on YouTube and Spotify. If you would like to support us, check us out on Patreon as well. All the links are able to be found on playersofthe-realms.com. While you're there, check out our wonderful merchandise. We are in the process of adding more so keep an eye out. Patron subscribers receive a discount on all purchase, so while on the store it's more incentive to help support our wonderful cast. While our players take a brief break, check out playersofthe-realms.com, and if you need dice and other things like that, check out dicelegion.com, and use product code POTR to get 10% off of your purchase while simultaneously supporting us here at Players of the Realms. Also, be sure to check in. And we're back. We've just left off where Ceres has just been informed that the the maid Haley has left the building to go and report this incident to the police. With that, Ceres, you are now regrouped with the party. And I'll like the police are on the way. The maid went to get the police, just like you thought. Uh, Meili? Meili? Yes, what's up? Uh, so the police are on the way. I think it might be best if you're not seen in this particular light. Just, just to the sort of gore in the background. Uh, in general, it's probably just not a good thing. Uh, people tend to be very memorable when the scene around things like this. I really don't want you to be remembered by the police. I think we both agree on that. I would agree. All right. Uh, if you want to just... Maybe go upstairs to our room and wait there. I, I want to talk to you later about something else as well. For right now, I just want to get you out of sight, out of mind for the police. Okay. Excellent. Uh, give me a quick persuasion check. Okay. Why is everyone questioning me today? You are persuasive. She is going to follow as instructed. Should I go now or should I wait a bit? Uh, now is probably better. I feel like it's been a little bit. They're going to be on their way here soon. So, yeah. yeah. If you feel that's best, okay. Yeah, normally, like, only because, you know, the bodies. This is going to make an impression, and I don't think, like I said, I don't want you to be part of that impression. I understand. I regret that I'm going to be part of that impression. Well, good luck. Yes, luck. And she's just going to kind of laugh a little bit before she uh, turns and starts walking. Uh, her feet are trailing blood. I will snap at Gearfried. <laughs> Just point Gearfried to the blood trail. Gearfried will snap and press to digitate the blood. <laughs> but with that, Meili is now upstairs. She is hidden away. And it's like, all right, everyone else, come here for a second. Um, Levin, you're gonna love this. 
Uh, I might have a way of sending the cops away and just sort of making this all go away for us a little bit. We're not killing least... the cops. No, no, no. That's always bad. They, they're very clickish and defensive. Also You'll illegal. Make... Sure, sure. Yeah, that. Um, no, no. I think I can just sort of tell them to leave and they will. Uh, I can provide them an inducement. Did you learn command in a time that I wasn't... No, no, but uh, as Levin keeps pointing out, uh, dragon-marked houses tend to enjoy a certain degree of latitude and leeway, and a sort of deferment. I'm um, raising both my eyebrows at Cyrus now, because this authority. is very new for me. Uh, crossing the fingers behind the back of his head and leaning up against the wall, just waiting for this one. So, I <laughs> may have a dragon mark, and I might be able to tell them to leave, because we're here on House Durrani business. So you're going to disguise yourself to have a dragon mark? We'll see right through that. Yeah. I don't have to disguise it. I usually go out of my way to hide the dragon mark. Now my head is like tilting to the side, like, I'm so confused. I'm gonna look at Levin, like, what kind of dragon mark house you said you had? Oh, and I saved that to service. But I'm still, I'm, look, I'm looking at Levin to see if you recognize, would you recognize her dragon, mark, uh, dragon house mark? Levin is keeping quiet. Exactly. Uh, okay, but I'm, I'm not asking her, but I'm looking at Levin. She's not showing you her dragon mark because her dragon mark's on her lower back. Oh, um, no, no, the claim alone is enough to keep Levin shut. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I'm now I'm, I'm like, kind of like, nope. He's not changing pose. He's not doing anything. He's not even looking at Cyrus. Nope. It's enough to squint my eyebrows that the one no. who keeps up the dragon house marks doesn't know this one. Hmm. I. Her. So, so, first of all, I do not belong to a dragon mark. Dragon marked house. I am not a part of House Durrani, and I would like to keep it that way. That definitely shifts my eyes towards you again. I am now glancing at Levin. I require absolute discretion on this matter. My personal right. safety is at risk. Right, because if anyone from House Fjallin knows that you exist, there are going to be questions. Yes. And you're on the wrong plan... side of the morn. With that being said, I don't think that we should even say that for your safety. Yeah, I mean, what are they going to do if they see someone with... I In mean... the house. Yeah, that's going gonna... to... Do you want the short version or the shorter version? Shorter, please. We're dead. But I say, make... sorry, go on. I say keep it hidden. We don't need that. We already have enough trouble. I don't even want to know anything about that as of right now. But oh, I can appraise you on Dragon Mark politics, but it doesn't currently seem the time or the place. I Thank do you. know. I do know that if I were to use that to insist they leave, they would leave. I mean, us being in the house alone with the, the head butler, we, that should be enough. We don't need to compromise as I look her up and down yourself. I'm very uncomfortable with the police being brought in on this matter. If you'd like, you can hide upstairs and we'll talk to them. I don't need to hide from the police. Not like that, anyway. <laughs> I, I didn't mean in a sense of like, I I was more referring to the, just wanting to not be in the spotlight. I've been dodging their attention for a long time. I'm not worried about that. 
Right. Well, either way, uh, I think that our best course of action might be just upfront honesty. I mean, we were fighting people that did break in. It's not like we did anything terrible. Uh, the desecration of the corpses might be a bit of a uh, pressure point, but, um, you know, we uh, just take that fine on the chin and... Uh, things happen. We can yeah. just say things got dicey. I mean, there's an army of undead. This is not the worst thing in the world that has occurred in Enron. If anything, we can do with the the law. I'm not going to question how. No. I'm simply going to wait. <laughs> so, with that said, Cyrus. Yes? You and I need to have a discussion later. Uh, she rolls her eyes. Yes. You're probably right. Oh. It's your turn now. Those words look like they hurt more than the actual fact. That the <laughs> I think I felt that too. Yeah, it's disappointing. Right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Or uh, how how long until the cops get here? They're gonna be here within the hour. <clears throat> Right, Gearfried will be waiting by the front door to answer it. Should have kept that made. Wait, should we? Um... Now, I'm realizing this in, in this moment. Mm -hmm. It is entirely possible that she's working for whoever is trying to get that necklace and is not, in fact, bringing over guards, but maybe, in fact, bringing over uh, Wave 2. Mm hmm. Should we secure the necklace in a different spot? In that hour, short resting. I mean, that'd be breaking like one of the rules. This is supposed to be here. No, no, I want to... Oh, you're talking to him. Oh, the necklace, yes. Yeah, no, I want to take a... If we have an hour, I'd like to take a turn to like short rest a little bit. Yeah. If you need a rest, I could stand guard. Okay. We have to maintain the security of the item. We have to do so with minimal property damage. We have to do so while maintaining our discretion. And if possible, we would not kill individuals that may want to take it. Outside of instances of threat to life, limb, and property, which was easily demonstrable. That's four rules already broken. I think it's a win for us if we can just leave this house without. Yeah, I mean, yeah, what this... property's been what property's been broken? No, no, not properties. Um, he said we're not supposed to kill nobody, and there's um, as I look at this, there is threat <laughs> to life and limb. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll put Cogfried back up on the uh, on 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 the as the eternal guard for the time being. If he sees anything unusual, he'll start blasting. And then Gearfried will put Cogfried over by the uh, the MacGuffin, and Gearfried will go to wait by the door. Alrighty. With that, the cops would be rolling in, and by this, it would be the Black Guard specifically. Um, they would be answering to the King himself. Meaning, uh, these are the official guards of the mm. road that serve the king. Hey, can I just cast invisibility on myself before the door opens? <laughs> uh, you certainly can. <laughs> because again, <laughs> a, as a reminder, Rote is where the king lives, so any law enforcement is part of the Black Guard, which do Yeah, serve... yeah, I just, I don't... When there's city guard and then there's the king's guard, I don't... Yeah, but this is also investigating a dragon marked house. Do you think they're just going to Yeah, no, the city I get it. I realize it's like it's an appropriate response for the issue, but Sarah. All's, a, be seen. all's I'm saying, and yes, you can cast invisibility if you so choose. 
Yeah, she just blinks out of his <laughs> visual sight and steps over to hide in a corner and watch the proceedings. Gearfried will keep will turn his armor on if he's turned it off already. And uh, as he sees the guards, just says, I, I don't expect to go into combat, but you know, better safe than dead. <laughs> Levin is going to take the his hands from behind his head, stand fully up, raise his hands. Hello. I am currently carrying a crossbow and give you leave to search my person for any other weapons to maintain the safety of the group. You're going to see as the four members of the guard walk up, they fan out. First, I would like you to the one who's in charge is going to take a step forward. I would like everybody who is present to begin the process of disarming themselves before we enter. Uh, where would you like for me to place my weapons? I would like you to step out of the doorway. So he's motion. he is motioning to the stairs here. Step out one at a time. Put your arms on the floor and then step back or actually step off to the side. Then the next person come out and repeat this process. Is that amicable to you? I will wait for your instruction for each person called out. Excellent. So, the one, uh, you, Elf, begin. You have already introduced that you have arms on you, so please step out and begin the disarming process. Okay, this is going to be a little comical. Uh, Levin's going to remove his hand crossbow, his heavy crossbow, <laughs> both of his daggers, <laughs> his scimitar. That scene from Pirates of the Caribbean 3 when Elizabeth's removing all of her. Uh, Pre pretty much. An oil flask. What about the second folding cross hand crossbow? Uh, that's in my pack, and that's oh, not okay. on my person. Ah. And he's going to offload his uh, crossbow bolt cases and place them neatly in a pile on the floor. And that's everything on your person. Unless someone has managed to sneak a blade on me during this. Yes. That is everything. Excellent. Thank you for your cooperation. Please move off to the side. Now, those of you who are still in the room, I would like you to also get the other four employers, employees who are there and anyone else who might be in that building. And with that, you are going to notice that behind the guard is standing the maid, Haley. Maid who? is going to stare daggers okay. at her the entire time. <laughs> Levin's not going to be staring daggers, but if he catches a glance from her, he's simply just going to nod his head. You do notice that she does look terrified, those of you who see her. Um, but with that, he is going to motion for the next person, and he's going to call out, uh, You, Flamehead, come on out. <sighs> Same fucking thing every single time. <laughs> All right, yeah, come on out. Your feet will walk out. Oh, sorry. Uh, Should I have said fire, Genasi? I, I apologize, sir. You can address me as a man. The name's Gearfried. Well, how was I supposed to know your name, sir? Ask me! What's your name? Begin to disarm, Gearfried. All right, I will. By choice, not because you told me to. And Gearfried's going to just... Pound the uh, the little sip, the little like gear symbol in the center of his chest, and then his armor is just going to pop off, and then he's just going to uh, drop his uh, wrench. Be like that's all I had on me. Okay, appreciate your cooperation. Who's next? I would be leaning on the wall. Same thing, arms crossed, one foot up. Eyes kind of like closed, like, all right. So I'll start walking out. 
So and said disarm over here. The black guard. The, pile. the black guard is going to just raise his hand because this came up into uh, question. What is your name, sir? Yami. Okay, Yami. Please begin to disarm. And he's going to turn to Gearfreak. Is that better? It's certainly more polite. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. But you are going to see that there is flashes of annoyance in his eyes. <laughs> oh, Gearfreak's happy about that. But with that, so yes, will, Yami, you may start to disarm. Yep, so I will just take my short bow out, drop it on the floor right next to everything, take my hand axe, throw it to the ground, as it like, like flam it into the dirt, and then I'll take my great sword out and just stab it into the ground so it's like standing up. Is you that realize all? that you're stabbing it into a stone stairway, right? Oh, okay, it's not like dirt, dirt. All right, so yeah, I guess I'll just lay everything down. Nope, you are on a yeah. manor, sir. The walkway is stone, not dirt. Am I strong enough to stab it into stone? <laughs> Please I don't. Can I, I, might be. Not I, can I, I stab it? Can I try to stab it into the? No, don't, no, no, don't it's deface the. Hold on. <laughs> Would you like to attempt to? I will. I already said it. I'm. I'm in. Nah. I'm in Go ahead and try. Give me a strength check. You can argue the skill. I'll just do a straight strength roll. Okay. Oh, for the love of God, roll low. I got a 14. God damn it. You... Oh, wow. You Is are able... to stab through stone? You're, but it's not that you're stabbing through the stone. When you kind of lower your or uh, strike the ground, you're more aiming towards the cement that's in between the stone. So it's easier to wedge in. But, between the flagstones. Yeah, pretty much. So it's not like you're actually okay, hitting the stone. You're hitting the, um, the, the mortar between the stone. I got it. Uh, you are going to hear the ringing of the sword as if you, and as a swordsman you've felt before when you've hit a blade the wrong way Oof. so your sword did not appreciate this action the guards also are, you see them, the ones that are not the leader their hands are already inching towards weapons. Just uh, it, it's almost like if you, I get it, you, you know, uh, yeah, they they are very on edge now because oh, of your action. Hell? Yep, gotcha. But I'm after as soon as I do that, I'm completely disarmed. I'm gonna put my hands up and stand by the others. Yeah, it's okay. It's already done. Yep. Um, with that, you are going to see the other staff members starting to walk out. They do not put any arms down because they don't have weapons. They're going to stand off on the other side of the doorway. So where you guys are on this side, they're going to be standing here. All right. Is that everybody who's in the house? I believe so. Wait, hold on. Three, four, five. Is, is that everyone or is anyone missing? <laughs> All right. Uh, I am invisible. Not going just up Saris. To... You have... I go. I'm quickly going up to Maylie's room. It's like we gotta go. We gotta go. We're going out the back. You have the remaining staff in the house. I believe that everyone in the house is currently present. And you are going to see them turn to uh, Haley. Is this the right count? Everybody's out of this house. Not seeing Bailey or Saris, she is going to shake her head. Um, no, there should be a couple of more. Well, they're With not that, in the house. Saris, what are you doing? Soon as I saw everyone sort of disarming, and I, I realized what was happening. 
and how this was going down, and I could see what's her name back there. Uh, I quietly went upstairs, and I got to, uh, went to the room, and they're like, "Hey, we gotta go." Okay, sure. Where are we going? You told me to hide here. I did, I did, and now it's gonna get weird. Um, we're gonna go out the back very quietly. You're going to be, you know what? We're, we're both gonna be ex quiet, extra stealthy. We're not gonna draw any attention. Maybe we hide in some shrubs. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna swap out uh, invisibility for pass with a uh, pass without trace on the two of us. Okay. And is there a window on our room? There is a window. Does it open? It opens. Does it open? Are we facing the backyard or the front yard? The front yard. I want a backyard facing window. Uh, I will go towards that uh, okay. from the second floor. Open that up and we will go out the back that way. Where I assume this guy has some sort of really nice garden. He does. He's even Perfect. got a he's even got a maze. Getting better every day. Um yeah. Uh we will go out that way and I don't know if I want to reuse the maze yet, but if I need to, I will. But for now we're just gonna go out and just sort of hide in the shadows along the edge of the garden, away from the house. It just kind of watch. Alrighty, go ahead and give me a stealth check. Oh, right. Lee will also be giving a stealth check. She gets a plus ten. Good to know. Traces good to use. Yep. Good because she yeah. now has she now has a thirteen because of it. Jesus. She rolled a one. Uh, uh, well, luckily I'm who I am. Can we use an inspiration on Lee? <laughs> Maybe it averages out. That is I, DM's control, sir. I'm going to say no, because I'm the one rolling for her. Unless somebody but wants to take... does my 29 help boost hold on. some of that up? Unless I... somebody wants to take full autonomy of Melee's character sheet, uh, that will not nope. be ap applicable. But, with that, Cyrus, you are invisible. With I can. nobody can see you. She is a bit more clumsy. Can I use some of that twenty nine to you know help her be better? Mm, no. Sorry. It was individually based, not by group. Fair, fair. Because well, ultimately I... what this really uh represents is as you jumped out of that window and fell you mm -hmm. landed literally without a sound. She wasn't used to making those types of jumps. So ultimately, the way that it would play out cinematically is that she would have kind of hit the ground, and mm -hmm. instead of rolling properly, she, she lets out the oof, and then kind of rolls in a sloppy way that she makes her more noticeable. Fair. But then... Uh, we have a whole house between us, so maybe that buys us a little leeway. And yep. like I said, we scurry off to uh, a distance because um, they just want to be ready to flee if anything gets weird because th that bitch Haley is going to ruin everything. And jumping huh. back over to the others. So... So there's nobody else in the room. Are you in the house? You're telling me this girl is lying to us. I don't believe there's anyone else in the house. You can have a look if you'd like. So where would the other traveling companions that she mentioned in her report be? I can honestly say I have no bloody idea. Okay, so they are going to... Because my whole contention is you guys don't actually know she left. No, just no, know that... I'm, just assuming, I'm assuming she's hiding because she... No, didn't... but Levin knows Maylee went upstairs and his hands are up, but one of them is pointing up. Gotcha, just 
just to check it. She's like, mm, okay. I'm just shrugging. You're, you're, yeah, you're free just shrug. has confidence that she can hide well enough. I'm just going to shrug. Just, mm. All right. Now that the, we're, we're somewhat sure that the, it's empty if we find anybody, we may have to end up taking them in. Shrugs again. You. Yeah. And he's going to be talking to Haley. You are sure they have two more traveling companions with them, yes? Yes. Um, one looked like they both looked to be elfish in nature. Do you remember, do you remember their names? Um, I think it was, um, what were the names that you used while you were there? Did you, Saris, did you and Maylee use your names? Saris never uses her name. Uh, not the strangers anyway. Probably would have been uh new character sheets got rid of all my notes. I have <coughs> Dahlia was the one you used for Gearfried. Because yeah, I mean it might as well be that one now because that's the only one I can remember. Because the um, uh, the other reason why is because she would have heard others calling you Saris. So as she's relaying information, she would be mentioning that alias along with the name that she would have heard other people calling you. I hate this little narc. <laughs> what? She's she's doing her civic job as a citizen. My God, how I dare hate she? this little narc. She lives in that little boot, isn't she? Licking that boot clean. <laughs> so. With that, she is going to relay all of that information to him. Um, <coughs> now, search them, make sure that they have relinquished all of their arms. So, ultimately, the other three guards are going to just give you guys a quick pat down, along with the other staff. Probably check my inventory to make sure it's clean. So, just real quickly, double check your inventory to make sure that you did relinquish everything, otherwise they may find something. Well, I do have other stuff in my equipment, but it's not, like, actively on me upstairs. Yep, and that's that's the only thing I'm saying. It's just whatever's on yeah. you right now. Because they expect that you're going to have more weapons, especially after uh, Levin dropped an entire arsenal. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was a mood. <laughs> but it works for him. After the quick pat down, they are going to enter the building and are going to be greeted by the piles and divided neatness that is the stacked bodies. And yep. you are just you are just going to see a look of I don't even know how to describe the expression as it's a blend of mystified shock. shock <laughs> one, they, tell they, me they, one of them is a rookie that's never seen this before. You, at least, the three that frisked the individuals or the everybody who was in the house pretty much immediately throw up at the site. So you've turned, you've sufficient, you have sufficiently caused three of these guards to throw up because no, they have participated in war. They have fought for many years, specifically during the Hundred Year War. Come on, they have to have fought the Carnathi. But this can't he, be that shocking. He, uh, Maybe they weren't stationed that way. Uh, yep. Fair. They've also been like pencil pushers. Well, no, they were actively fighting. Uh, it's just this is Any not a, this is fighting. this is not a war type situation where everything is it, neatly. This is not a war. This is a war crime. <laughs> Pretty much, like this. This is literally like myth methodical, and does Eberron have a Geneva Convention? No. Oh, you mean Maybe? a Geneva checklist? Um, they no, they have some sort. Uh, you know what? We'll have to table that for another time. The, mm -hmm. the, be the better question is: Does Rote have a law for uh, the dismemberment or the? Uh, what is that? Uh, I had the word earlier. Thank you. Even desecration, the, desecration, the desecration, the desecration of the bodies. Yeah. Even the staff has to, would have to acknowledge though, that these people are trespassers. Yeah. 
Oh, they acknowledge that full fact. Well, but after, after that, after this guard's vomit, Gearfried is going to give an exaggerated sigh and say, "I just fucking cleaned that and cast Prestidigitation again to get rid of the vomit." They are going to look around as they kind of wipe the uh, residual uh, vomit off of their mouths. The ones that vomited, at least. You're going to see the one in charge who held his held on to his cookies. Just looks around. So, hmm. I really hope there's a good explanation for this. There is, and it is a very uh, in-depth story. And at the risk of just repeating everything that's already happened, Gearfried, unless anyone has anything to chime in, Gearfried will uh, give every detail, excluding Saris and Mei Li, and even you just say, I'll, I'll be vague about like the uh, the bodies being cut up, and I'll just say, you know, in, in trying to... Um, to make throw the under the bus. Easier to yeah, and, and try to make the bodies easier to manage. Uh, I'll point to Fennec. This one here uh, decided to cut them up into smaller bits just so we could, because we were instructed not to leave the house. And I'll explain all that. And I, I just give everything we've already kind of talked about to cover our ass. So, what you're telling me is you all thought that it is better to cut up the bodies into smaller pieces and call the proper authorities. Some of the party thought that, and by the time they had already begun enacting the machinations of their uh, of their brains, um, the rest of us were a bit too late to intervene. Now, what does surprise me is that you apparently have two more traveling companions. They're not mentioned in your story at all. Uh, I mean, I said that we, you know, had to deal with the intruders. I, 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 I Gearfrey never mentioned anyone specifically by name, for the record. That's what I meant when I said I was being... Well, he, he's also keeping track of the amount of people in your story. So if you're omitting, right. he knows that there's two people who are missing from the story. Right. Ow. Um Gearfried will then just say, uh Well yeah, there were two other people that were with us. I never said there wasn't two people that weren't with us. Anyway. He's just gonna sit there pensively because he's not actually sure what to say. Actually right this second. Uh-huh. Um, Pardon me, sir, do you perhaps need a moment to recollect yourself so that you may follow proper investigative procedures? Ah, uh, yes. Do me a favor. Please have a seat in sight. I must consult with my fellow guards. Of course. Uh, officer, may I put my hands down? Yes, you may. Did your hands been up this entire time? He has not been instructed <laughs> to do otherwise. Stonewall Jackson over here. Um, and he's going, going to walk off to go and consult with the others. Good to have hobby. <laughs> After several minutes of reconvening, he is going to return back to you. Well, we are going to need you all to come down with us to the station. We aren't arresting you, but we are requesting that you willingly 
enter a zone of truth so that you can confirm your story. We will be doing this with each of the staff members here. Pardon, I have one request for accommodation because of the nature of the request that we were given. There is an item currently that we are employed to secure, and you would have to take custody of this item to maintain its security. Or Indeed. take us one at a time. I don't think anyone would uh, protest the, uh, you know, ha I, I, I don't think anyone would be against, at least in our group, obviously you might have different opinions. But... I, I do have one thing to, to add. Being that given we were here on a job, knowing the house that we work for, as a, I point to, was well, the house Orion, right? Uh. We do need at least, I do request that you keep one guard because we can't all leave the area due for reason. We will take the necklace into custody until our investigation is over. We'll all right, thank until, you. Until those who will submit to the zone of truth submit. Fair enough. As long as that's protected, that's all I care about. Levin is holding out his hands, palms facing up. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm under the rest. You need to detain me. Well, if you come with us willingly, we are going to put you under arrest, but we will be taking official statements from right. everyone. And he's going to look from your group to the group of the um, house staff. Levin's going to walk forward and basically stand at attention until he is instructed to follow. Likewise. With, and with that, you are going to be motioned towards the, at the end of the long walkway, there is going to be a large sky coach that is powered by dragon shards. Pretty much a paddy wagon. You are all going to be loaded into the back of it, and you would be shuttled to the police department or the equivalent of the police department from there. You aren't booked or anything along those lines. You are led, though, into an interrogation room that does have the zone of truth already set up. Right. With that, you are led one at a time to the zone of truth, and real quickly just summarize in your own words what you would be saying to recount the tale. So I'm going to start off with Levin. Levin will give an alarmingly detailed report of the specific events for when he noticed the teleportation, his specific actions, and only his actions he will be claiming responsibility for the three and emphasizing that it is only under direct questioning that he is going to be answering, meaning he's not going to give them or volunteer additional information unless they start asking after it. Like, he knows how, to, how he is supposed to be interrogated. He knows that they have a procedure to go through and he is only giving specific proofs. Yep. So after the quick retelling... He knows of, He knows nothing of what went on in the room behind him when that was locked. Nor should he. But ultimately, after you give that quick recap, there is going to be another two or three questions, the first of which is going to be, and of those... of the, After those events where you operated in self why is it you did not contact the authorities immediately? To maintain the security and safety of the staff, I had to gather them together and start asking questions to maintain that. And then you My started... intention was to contact law enforcement after that was already ascertained. 
So the cutting up of the body was a whim? Something I was not present for. Because your fire genasi friend, I believe, had said that you all did it to make it easier to move or something along those lines. I can neither confirm nor deny statements made by a third party. No, that's fair. I figured I would ask. And now, we still are under the impression that we don't have all of your traveling companions. Would you have any understanding of why they may why they may not have been in the house or why they might have wanted to run? Any comments that I would make would be speculation and would not be admissible in any of the legal proceedings, so I, with, I withhold comment. You're going to see that he doesn't like the answer, but he's not going to press it forward. But ultimately, he is kind of as satisfied as he's going to be with the responses. And he is going to kind of send you out free to go while he calls in the next person who is going to be the head butler. Before that, we're going to jump over to Ceres. Ceres, ah. you were hiding in the back. You were with Maylee. Then you see that the guards come in. So as you're watching like through the windows, you would see the guards walking into the area where the necklace is. And they, you see them walking out with the case. You see all of your traveling companions and the staff being shuttled away from the structure. Ultimately, uh -huh. after you wait two to five minutes, you would see that besides the guards stationed at the end of the walkway, the house itself is empty. I will look to Melee. It's like we're going to try. We're going to go back into the house, and we're going in through the. We don't have to go through the front door because we're in the backyard. So yes. we're not going to really deal with this guard because he's just waiting by the front door. Um, the guards that I'm talking about are from the House Orion, and they're the ones that are stationed at the gate. At the front door? At the front gate, not the front the ones door. That, the ones oh. that you in when you were disguised as the butler. That ah, yeah, right, them. those guys. And none of the rope guards stayed at all? No, they took the necklace with them. Okay. In that case, I'm like, alright, where can I go? Hmm. We're gonna go towards the house. I'm going to be. Hmm. The window that uh, the window that we exited through should still be open because it doesn't sound like they searched the house. Yep, it's still open. Okay, so it's like, let's see if we can just go back in the way we came. Um, sure. But why did we hide? We, there the reasons, reasons, deeply personal, cop hating reasons. But won't that make us look a little suspicious? I find the ambiguous suspicion better than the absolute truth. She's going to look at you confused, but just kind of nod in agreement and follow along with you. Yep. So I will then try to climb up to the window. Alright. I'd say athletic checks for both of us. Okay. Actually, I'll have her wait at the bottom, because if I can get to the top, I can just lower my rope and pull oh. her up. Alrighty, so go ahead and give me an athletic check. Cool, I am gonna... Yeah. Hmm. 
I'm going to use inspiration on that. You can certainly use your last inspiration. I insist. There we go. Okay, you are able to lithely make it back up to that floor, to the next floor. And... Yep, and then lower the rope and help Melee up. Alrighty. As you do so, you are able to help Melee up, and you are back. You are both able to enter the house through the window. And I'm just going to be like, for now, I'm thinking, we'll just, we have a bed, we have a nice locked door. Uh, I will go and lock the door. Uh, for now, let's just wait here, see what happens. Okay, sounds good. And she's going to shut the window and lock it, closing the curtains. Yes. Also, I've been meaning to ask, um, can I see your mark? Sure. I know it's and, been bothering you lately. I didn't, I have, it kind of stopped today. And as you notice, as she turns and kind of lifts the um, hem of her shirt enough to reveal it, it's no longer festering. It is now fully emblo eh, embossed on her skin. It does still look like a brand. But it looks stable. Does it look like a known dragon mark now? Not a known dragon mark, but it, besides not being, it, it is more of a scar, but it follows the same general patterns that dragon marks would. It also doesn't follow, it doesn't have the patterns that aberrant dragon marks possess. Do I possibly know? what this might be indicative of? Um, with... I'm gonna say you can attempt to give me a history check, but before you do, what is Ceres' knowledge of the Dragon Mark house system and history? She has... A little bit of knowledge because she was initially raised as a member of House Filani. Um, but then her dragon mark started to manifest and her parents didn't want her to have to Fjarlin. That's House Fjarlin. Um, didn't want her to become basically a dragon marked scion and she didn't want to be taken away from her parents so they fled and there's a the whole thing so she has an early basic understanding of dragon marks in a kind of general sense plus everything she may have heard about rumors and stuff on the street as she was growing up but she has a brief short formal education in dragon mark history all right, go ahead and give me a history check. Straight roll. All right. But I would like to add guidance. It will, you certainly can. It will be a very high DC. I'm sure it will. I think Joan knows what this is, but I am curious to see if Sarah's can figure it out. Oh. You don't know specifically what house it's from or what it represents, but you remember seeing a mark very similar to it. It was in just kind of a brief synopsis on a book you may have read on the history of the world. And it was touched on, and the thing that sticks out most from your research was that the symbol that this reminds you of was involved in an incident uh, a couple of thousand years ago. 
Uh, cool. Any sort of abandoned house names coming to mind at all? Probably not. No. Uh, cool. Cool. Uh, okay, well, it's stabilized. That's good. Um, yeah, thank you for showing me. I'm, I'm glad that's not as problematic as it was. Indeed, it doesn't itch anymore. Thank you. So it does yes. suck that it it feels like a scar. Does it look so bad? No, actually, no. It looks, you know, it, it looks kind of. Um, actually, it looks kind of like a pattern now. You you might I. It doesn't look like you know, the like the really bad thing. Oh. Well, that's something at least. And yeah, she's going to try uh, to smile, but uh, is still kind of yeah. like subconsciously rubbing at the uh, scarred area. Yeah. We should, uh, we should start developing a habit of not touching that ever and just pretend like it doesn't exist. Sure. I mean, that sounds awful the way I said it, but um, trust me from experience, uh, the less you acknowledge it, uh, the less you're likely to sort of draw attention to it accidentally. And she's going to nod and she's going to bring her hands immediately to the forefront. But unfortunately, because it's on her mind, you would see that she's like yeah. having this inner struggle where subconsciously she's moving and then she catches herself and then she's like, stop. And she does yeah. this over the next couple of minutes until she's distracted by something else. Yes, I will try to start giving her a few brief lessons in sleight of hand. Alrighty. We'll get back to that in a few minutes. For now, we're going to okay. jump back over. During these events, the head butler gave his statement. He made Serenity, gave her statement. The chef Veronica gave her statement. Everybody went in time after time. Yami, it's your turn. As you get called in. Yep. So, um, I get called in, so I'm sitting, I sit down. I'm like, just... all right, so what is it you want to know? Well, what happened? Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. I wasn't even there most of the time. Oh, so who was? I'm not too sure who was at that in at that area at that exact time. Well, then were you aiding them in cutting up the bodies? Nah, honest no, not at all actually. Do you know who did? Honestly, no. When I walked in, it was already like that. Do you know anything? Honestly, not really. I just know that the intruders came in and they got taken care of in the manner that we both found them in, honestly. And your traveling companions? Yes. Where did they get off? Well, they were all there when I arrived. When did they leave? When you asked us to come out. He's going to kind of... His <laughs> eyes are going to narrow. <laughs> oh, so they were there, and then they left as we arose, as we left. No, well, all the companions I know of, we, you asked us to come to the station... I still was present. And how might they have escaped our eyes? Shoot, again, I have no idea. Mm. Are you sure you have no idea how Ceres might escape prying eyes? You are in the zone of truth. Yeah, exactly. Also, I, wouldn't, I don't know if Ceres is tactic. She always does something different. 
công khai. So, if I get this, if I under, if I understand this correct, you have no idea what happened. You have no idea what went on. You have no idea who cut up the bodies. But you do know that everybody was there when you arrived, and then shortly after we arrived and asked you to get out of the house, those two traveling companions split. I honestly can say I don't know. I but that's what listen. you just said. I said, uh, huh? That was a word-for-word -word recount of what you had said. I didn't say they left. I just said, I don't know what happened to whoever was there. I don't no, know. I don't you, know nothing. You said your traveling companions were there, and then we showed up, and they left. Yeah, we left when you asked us to come to the station. They're all here with you, me. You said they were gone when we asked you to leave. The so now this this individual's head is going to start hurting at this point. Okay. We're, we're done with you. Don't go anywhere. Meaning, don't leave town. Yes, sir. Next. Where's my sword, by the way? Fire Genasi. Oh, everything is still there on the stoop. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry, Gearfried. That was your name. Come on in. Right. And he's going to tell Yami to leave. Gearfried steps in. So, what happened? Uh, well, that's a very broad question. Are you referring to what happened before... They arrived, when they arrived, after they arrived, or after you arrived? Let's say stuff in the beginning. All right, and Gearfried will recount. Um, Gearfried will recount very vaguely what happened, uh, basically just kind of saying, like, he, he will not say names. He will not specify beyond saying he or she. And like, all right, so that guy came in, he attacked us, and then... We fought back. Uh, one guy got locked in a room. Uh, one guy tried. I attacked one guy who initially caught. I I don't actually know what he did, but he was near smoke. And then when the smoke cleared, he was standing there. So he was running away. We were ordered to keep the thing safe, and uh, I was trying to do that and chasing him down. Uh, and then uh, he was attacked later by not me. And, and then you just kind of go in in that fashion. Okay, and the dismemberment of the bodies. What about it? Who did it? It wasn't me. I did, I did, uh, <laughs> I did appropriate one of the hearts of the carcass, but purely for scientific reason. He is going to put his head in his hand. Are you a licensed doctor? I am an enthusiast of the sciences. I don't know if you know this, but I am an artificer. That's wonderful, but even artificers have to go through proper channels to be able to acquire parts for repl replication. Right, and we go through those channels, but you have to start somewhere. Oh, so I don't have a teacher in medicine, so I was trying to... Clearly, then, you went through the documentation so then you could acquire one. Yes, if you just show me the paperwork, we'll resolve this issue now. I am a student of the world, my friend. So you don't have authorization? I was unaware that this place held that sort of uh, profession underneath a uh, bounce of paperwork. Well, if you've lived in a civilized society, you'd know that most people frown upon cutting out the hearts of dead bodies. Well, normally those dead bodies didn't try to attack and presumably kill anyone that was in the place of their, their residence. Unfortunately, that's a rationalization which does not belong in the place of interpreting rules. These laws are in effect because we are a civilized society, sir. I'm aware, and I was unaware that that law existed, though, and I can promise you it won't happen again. We'll get to that one later. Now, 
We were informed that your traveling companions were all present until we showed up. Any ideas why they might have left? I have ideas, but it's merely speculation and not, uh... Well, feel free to speculate. I'd really rather not. I'd rather you did. I would love right. to hear the thinking of somebody who might know these individuals. Because if I'm being frank, it looks very suspicious. Well, Frank, um, I honestly do not... There are a variety of unscrupulous things that I have considered she might be partaken in. None of which are proven, and I haven't been able to do so, but I was always just under the impression that she was a sneak thief and perhaps was wanted for petty larceny. Alright. And the other one? Uh, the other one is more unrealistic. Um, I'm not sure how you feel about liches, but the perfect disguise for one would be a young woman. Did you just accuse what? her of being a lich? It's it, it's been a fantasy of gear for for like five seconds. He's he's going to jot down a note that second traveling companion might be lich. Understood. The second one's more pie in the sky. Hold on, which one did you just call a lich, though? I'm confused. I, it, I didn't. Was it mainly? I, didn't, I know I you didn't specify. specify. I'm kind of curious. So it's like, now I want to know. Damn. Uh, Sarah, Skierfried has been, like, running through a bunch of, like, things that she can be. He's ruled out vampire. She's been out in the sunlight. I love it. Um, with that, so the assumption is she's some kind of monster. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a sneak thief. Maybe. Oh, that's funny. Maybe, maybe an abjuration, something. And with that, he is going to kind of motion that he is done with you, but he is. He wasn't suspicious before talking to Gearfried. He's suspicious now. Lovely conversation, Frank. And Gearfried will stand up and leave. And with that, we'll have Fennec interrogation the next session. We level up. Gotcha. <laughs> Not level gets yet. Yeah, you're almost, you're almost there. Next combat encounter, you guys will be leveling up. Be patient, it's happening. Do I have to get them <coughs> out of jail? What, no, they, they are released on their own cogn recognizance because they were never actually arrested. But they were they will be warned not to leave Rote anytime soon. And he they subtly suggested they will be back because now they're very interested in the two missing traveling companions. Well, that's just rude. They only asked their first name. Well, they already have the names that were, they were given. So because okay. nobody really went along with the name Ceres usually uses, the maid Haley had already told them that it was Maylee and Ceres, basically. Mm -hmm. Alright. But they don't have, like, the full names of everyone, just the names that were given? Just the names that they were given. So basically, just the first names of everybody. Alright, cool. Check. Have the staff come home yet? The staff and the party members are coming home, and we're going to be wrapping up in about five minutes. So take this time to uh, interact with each other as the staff goes on to do their to finish doing the work that they have to do while dinner is being prepared for everybody except for Levin. We're firing Haley, right? I mean, we're, we're doing that. We don't no, have no. the authority. It's fine. 
she needs the gainful employment. Let her stay here under this roof where she's safe. Oh, good, you're here. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm here. Where's Haley? <laughs> Haley, that, uh... Haley has not returned. She does not feel safe in this house. She will be returning <laughs> when Horridan returns. She, okay, so she's smarter than I gave her credit for. Yeah, she ain't an idiot. Can you believe the audacity of that woman? Considering that she was doing exactly what she was trained to do. Yes. Well, she's fucking things up. How? I'm with Saris on this one. She well, knows that we were who, hired who took, to... Who took the initiative to actively desecrate and dismember bodies? All we had to do was put them somewhere and be rid of them, and then the you problem was You the... need to shut up. If you're not going to turn yourself in, someone who is not law enforcement is going to be after you. I can't. Who do you think is going to go after you to keep you quiet? don't exist. You mentioned House Thorani. That means House Fjarlane and House Thorani have a vested interest in your presence. They don't you know have... I'm... Listen to me. They don't and know I I'm here. I told you to shut up. You have been getting yourself involved and throwing around the name of whatever organizations have popped into your newsletters or outgoings. So, at what point do you think all of this was going to come back and bite your head off? Oh, you can start talking now. No, well, I'm nothing. thoroughly uncomfortable. <laughs> Listen, none of the Dragon Mark houses know who or what I am, and I want to keep it that way. I'm not going into any police precinct to be questioned. Well, can May Lee go in at least? I mean, it's not like she's. That, that's a really bad idea, I think. Uh, possibly worse for her than for me. How can it possibly be worse for her than you? You remember the incident at Nusira? Oh, right. They still want her here, though. I thought that was just Nusira. You know, you know a lot about dragon marked houses. Uh, like the history, right, Levin? I've read a book. Okay, so... She's... A dragon mark isn't what I thought it was initially. It actually looks a lot like mine. Not like mine in, like, specifically mine. But it looks more stable now. But it's not the same as every other one I've ever seen. It's just making me think of something on the tip of my tongue from, like, a thousand years ago. Is there something that happened to dragon mark houses a thousand years ago? 1500, uh, 1500 years ago was the War of the Mark. What's that? Uh, that would be House Tarkanen. What's that? The, the, explain all of that. I don't know what that is, other than what I just told you. House Tarkanen bears the Mark of Death. Is that bad? Are you saying all of this out loud for everyone to hear? Yes. I'm asking Levin, yes. And Levin is saying this out loud. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. She has a dragon mark too. Yes. Don't All right. talk out loud. Shh. Don't say those kinds of words out loud. 
we can avoid it. All right. And now you're still in the I'm, vestibule having and, this conversation, or where are you all having and, this conversation? But we're like, I would have pulled them like and into I like the only trophy room. Basic history. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do a show of hands. Keep them up if you have one of these uh, things. I will. <laughs> Sarah will not raise her hand. Right, and I will not let her. Making... I will not let, let Maylee raise her hand. You are already making this difficult. All right. So, assumedly, you two have these things that I shouldn't say. Yes. Um, shouldn't say them. Right. Uh, why have you been, you know, not telling us? I probably wouldn't have stepped in to help Maylee over at the bar if I had known that. I do not belong to them or any dragon marked house. I am my own person. Gilfred, pardon me for some minor speculation. Whether or not he bears a mark assigned to one or ha one house or another house. But that would be internal politics on their end. And while they're not typically at each other's throats openly, they also prefer that it not bleed out into the streets. She's not wrong to want to maintain discretion. Just my personal right. freedom. But I mean, the fact... You could have at least told the rest of us. We're not gonna go shouting out from the rooftops. If I hadn't thought about the suggestion that I'd made earlier, I wouldn't have told you then. Do you know how you do you know the best way to keep a secret? Don't tell anyone and then kill everyone who knows. I mean you could also trust that the people that you're traveling with are uh, competent enough to not spill that particular secret. I've made that mistake before. You had to listen to this testimony from the others before they were, we were separated and interrogated separately. I'm assuming you already moved once the uh, law enforcement entered. We snuck back into our room and waited. No, no, I meant when they initially entered. Oh, I heard most of what they were saying, but it seemed on the chance, off chance, that they might bring someone more equipped to see through most of my magics. Better, the easiest way to not be seen is just not be there. Mainly, my apologies for bringing this up. Um, the two of you are most likely high-profile suspects right now. But I can do it. And that's why they suspect. Because they don't know. Neither of you were present. Do you it's what? Do we pass through any, like, anti-magic, uh precautions when we were going in like w was there like a metal detector that dispels illusions or something yeah damn it sorry never mind continue uh yes. Saris encountered it before when she stole into uh right one of the areas yeah. they didn't strip search us though did they they did not strip pat search you. they just gave you a they... pat down just a pat down so theoretically if Saris and Melee went in um, aside from simply saying they're not fans of law enforcement, they'd really have no reason to check their skin, would they? Uh, that's no. a bit of awkwardness, because that's... Like, it is a form of identification. Especially if there's a claim to be made. Right, mm -hmm. but no one's claimed that they're dragon marked. Also, de oh. depending on wardrobe, like, if they have anything like a belt, they would be checking around the brim. 
so they would be lifting at least to see the lower back area to check. Yeah, that's so, where Saris's dragon mark is. And same so, thing with uh, melee. You could dress in like wounds. That only goes well, for so long, and if there's no blood through it, it tends to create more questions and solutions. I could stab you. Tempting, but I would have to respond in kind just to, you know, give as good as I get. You're so done being catty. Well, I'm, I'm not being catty. I'm genuine. I'm being genuine. If we could dress up the dragon mark as a wound, I mean, it it wouldn't be the safe, not safe, that's the right word for it. It wouldn't be the best or cleanest option, but... They're going I mean, to put me under a zone of truth. Right, and when they ask, how'd you get the wound? The guy with the fire cut you. In addition, a, a dragon mark is more than just surface level. In order for to, someone to remove its presence, you would have to cleanse their skin. Trust me, I've tried to get rid of it before. It doesn't go away. Well, I'm, I'm just more trying to mask it in some way, even if temporarily. They're only going to be questioning you for about a half hour. My concern is, and I don't know this for certain, but it's always popped into my head, is that they have a way of recognizing dragon marked people when they enter. One could have a go with mundane makeups, but I yeah, he'll see right through that. Well, it's not magical. You'd be surprised. A good disguise kit can carry you a good distance, but it doesn't lead, hold up to complete scrutiny. And lead pigments have been in use for a while. On the note of this conversation, we're going to pause here for the evening. It's been an interesting evening. I was doing so good. <laughs> and then you ran. Ah. Uh, well, the cops showed up. Oh. There yeah. is a long history of muscle memory in that action. <laughs> this was definitely one for the books. So, continuing on with the uh, <laughs> trend I'm trying to uh, start here, we're going to go from uh, up to down. So we're going to start off with Saris. If you had to describe the events of the session from this evening within a word to a sentence, what would you describe it as? Fuck! <laughs> okay, I like it. Oh, Levin, how about you? Tedious, frustrating. Uh, Yami, how about you? I'm sorry, I'll come again. How would you describe tonight's session? Oh, definitely. Like I said, one for the books. Definitely have a lot to recap on on the recap session for Fennec. Oh, I can't wait to see how Fennec is going to answer these questions. Oh, gosh. You guys turned yourselves in? <laughs> so, well, yeah, well. Fennec went with you, technically, so. Yeah, he's going to have to at least accept that little bit of a uh, railroad. Exactly. Back. Yeah. He's going to have to come back to the responsibility that he didn't want to take. Yep, he's going under that zone of truth. And if yep. he screws Saris over, he will never get that. <laughs> I thought he was going to get it anyway. He wasn't getting the <laughs> hug. No one's getting a hug. I don't know. I feel like you'd hug... Uh... Hold on. You technically I don't know. Get... I, 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 you... I think I hear iron bracelets in the horizon. You you danced with Mei Li. Like, there's got to be... There's got to have been some degree That's... of a hug there. A dance is not a hug. Eh? Unless you're hug dancing. Just no, because saying. if... Oh, the heavens. We're not debating this one. Uh, a, waltz does, a waltz is not a hug. Gearfried, how about you? How would you describe tonight's session? Oh, I'm never going to be working with House Oregon in the future, am I? Uh, Probably consult with a lawyer. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, so that's right. a great assumption. Play your cards right, you might get a job at House Fjarland. Oh, gosh. Turn code immediately, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, everybody, it was a interesting session, to say the least. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I hope you had a blast. I can't wait to find out how they're going to get out of this mess. Oh, gosh. It's, We're so screwed. It's going to be interesting. This is why I didn't want to work with houses. Dragon Mark houses are always a problem. Yeah. So but, I stay away from the city. Mm. <laughs> For now, we are going to say goodbye, good night, have a wonderful weekend, and enjoy your week for next week. Bye. Bye. Good night.